I got a girl's number. I got ghosted. Cool. I got a girl's number. This woman, man. So she's from the Dominican Republic. I thought, at first I thought she was like kind of putting on an act. Yeah, yeah, just like an act. And I told her like multiple times, I'm like, you know, you can you can drop the act and, and talk to me like a normal person. And keep in mind too, like uh, she's 26 years old and I thought she was pushing 40, guys. Like I thought, I was like, she looked uh, way older than, than she said she was. And Hey guys, my name is Brain Dead at Nighttime Rants. I had a genius idea last weekend. I took the money my mommy gave me to go out with my overweight friend Copilot. Copilot is such an awesome guy. He always lets me buy drinks for him and lets me take care of his dog so he can go on vacation. We went to a strip club. Unfortunately, I didn't find a girlfriend there. Poor me. I met this lady who looked like she was 65, but she said she was 18 so it must be true. She even gave me her number which means she is probably attracted to me. What was really strange is that she acted almost over the top affectionately. It almost seemed like she was acting, but then again why would a professional stripper that is employed in a club and earns her money by seducing undesirable men not be honest to me? I said to her, no need to do an act babe. I am not like the other guys. I can save you. Then I continued giving her all of mommy's money. I'm not trying to be delusional anymore. Like, I'm, I'm completely over it, by the way. Like, I just, uh, after Friday, you know, I kind of quit caring. You know, I mean, I, I quit c caring before that. I honestly didn't even really want to see her. I just wanted to, like, say hi. I just wanted to, like, say hi. <sighs> but, I don't know, she sent me a picture of her boobs. I still don't know why, uh, but she blocked me. <laughs> she blocked me randomly. Hey, guys. It's Brain Dead Nighttime Rants again. So I just wanted to say hi to that beautiful lady I met. Unfortunately, she said she can only meet me if I bring her money for her sick dog. I told her I would bring her something. She responded with a picture of her beautiful upper body. When I showed up at her home address, which I spent all night finding out, I told her that I don't have money, but I gave her some dog medicine. Then she blocked me for no apparent reason and called the police. Anyways guys, those are the ups and downs of a relationship. I just, I just felt so bad for my grandma and my dad, you know, I, I wasted all this money and I'm always like trying to help people and shit. Like, uh, like for example, right? The band kid, like this kid that I met, this, this kid comes into my life, you know, just spontaneously, randomly, you know, I saw, I just like i said before he, he wanted me to be a vocalist for his band he saw me at this food store and yeah that's how kind of how it happened and the fucking crazy part is like this kid i mean he's hadn't hasn't had a job same 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 situation right living with his parents he hasn't had a job in like fucking forever they let him go for whatever reason he has like literally zero dollars to his name and i'm like you know what dude let's go out i'll pay for shit i got some money left we're, we're good you know i got i got some money left and that's when you know like start going the strip club a little bit I, I think it's safe to say i'm done with that shit i mean i, I just I'm, I'm never going there like by myself i, I just I'm, I'm never going there like by myself like maybe I, I would say like the strip club in general is like a place you probably only want to go maybe like i don't know like maybe once a year like on an occasion and just don't spend that much money i guess but either way you know this kid i mean he just loves the strip club it's just like a place like that he um he just he just loves it you know and and it kind of like got me into it again amount but this kid man just like wants to go like every fucking weekend and then i have nothing going on and i'm like all right cool i'll pay for shit and and overall like you know he, he ended up finding a job finally somehow he's like dude you know i, I went months without a job finally you know finally i got a job and he's like i'll pay you back but either way you know this kid like he just would want stuff he's like he's like hey you know is it okay if i can if i can get this i'd be like all right cool just just to make him happy you know what i mean like i would buy him weed um 
I would buy him shit. You know, I'd have to pay for like, he, he would like tap me on the shoulder. Like he'd find like a girl that like he wanted to get a lap dance from, like that she'd be talking to him. He's like, hey bro, you mind if I get a lap dance? I'd be like, all right, fine, cool. You know, I give him like 40 bucks. You know, I started hanging out with these other kids that he's friends with. And this other kid from my high school, he's, tell, he's saying, he's like, he asked the bank, he's like, oh, you know, you have money for weed? You got weed? He's like, nah, bro, I'm broke. And uh, he's like, oh, man, you know, because his parents don't let him smoke weed, all that shit. And he was saying, like, it really helps him and all that. And, you know, he's sitting in the back seat and I turned around. I'm like, I'm like, you know, do you really need it? And he's like, he's like, yeah, you know, it, it would help. I'm like, all right. You know, I'll, I'll buy you, I'll buy you a joint. I'll buy you a fucking pre-roll, even though I don't smoke. But yeah, you know, I, I, I bought this kid 20 bucks for a joint. I'm like, okay, cool. Might, might as well make him happy. You know, the band kid, I've been paying for a lot of his shit. He probably owes me like 400 bucks. I, and he's like, he's like, oh, I'll give you the money. Like eventually, you know, when I get paid for my job and you know, he was even saying like, cause he got paid like what last Friday and he was supposed to like give me a small amount. Like he's going to give me like small amounts, but he's like, Oh, you know, I had to pay off my credit card cause I'm in credit card debt and shit and blah, 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 blah. So all my money, my first paycheck had to go to all these bills. And let me tell you this too, real quick. That just reminded me of something. This just actually happened like fucking Wednesday. Uh, wingman, you know, I would say he's like, he's an OG. You know, I, I think, I think he's going to pay me back. I know he's going to pay me back cause he tried to, but my Zell is fucked up. So, uh, basically wingman, he's fucked. I mean, even though he's got rich parents though, like his dad's a bald Nigerian doctor who makes half a mil and his fucking mom is a nurse who makes like 200 K they're good. Right. But like, I've even had this talk with him. Like, yo, it's your favorite YouTuber brain dead by nighttime rants. I have good news. I made lots of friends. When I was taking out the trash, I saw this kid eating out of our trash can. We talked about high school, my savings, and the strip club. He said that he would love to find me a girlfriend at the club if only somebody would give him money for his sick dog. Of course I helped my new friend out. It was such a huge win to have friends that would go to the strip club with me. It's only sad that so many of their dogs are sick. Hey guys, it's Tails. Dating is all about height and face. That's a fact. It will always be that way and there is an endless amount of evidence supporting that claim. However, now that I got some distance from the black pill community, I have to admit that I am pretty ashamed for some of the things I posted on YouTube and I also can't comprehend why I took some of those clowns seriously. I mean, have you ever wondered how many based black pill stories would sound if they were told in the perspective of a other person? For example, DBDR and his hooker Oneidas. He says that she blocked him for absolutely no reason. Just because he is ugly and blamed everything on the black pill. But then in later videos, the truth slips out. I will play you three clips. In the first, he is talking about how he called her every day. In the second, he stalks her online and then asks her why she gave him a fake name. In the third, he is talking about seeing her talking to his loser friend Wingman. And it's like, like, dude, I can fuck in here. Let me pull it up right now on my phone. It's so funny, guys, because like I texted her like three days in a row after that shit. So what when was this like Friday? I remember t I texted her Saturday, Sunday, because I went back again, by the way, if you didn't know. Uh, just, I just remember the next day, like her friend, which her too, she lied about her name twice. I found her fucking Instagram too. And even yesterday, I remember telling the Dominican, uh, stripper, I'm like, I, I said, I told her her friend's real name. And she's like, how the fuck do you know that? She's like, who told you that? Uh, she kind of got like freaked out over it. And I'm like, I just know things like I rem I just know things. And, uh. I don't know. She she finally told me her real name, which, I mean, it was in her Instagram. It just seemed like a fake. She she did the same shit. She told me two fake names. Before. I'm just kind of sitting there. You know, they're just talking. You know, when you're a third wheel, right? Like you're literally just sitting there. Oh, this is making me so mad. This is why I was so upset because it it brought back such like I can't even describe the shit. It 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 brought back like so many like intense memories that it just I don't know what the fuck. It just made me emotional as fuck because, and I don't really get like that, you know, like when I'm just, you know, sober and by myself, but 
it just, I don't know what the fuck. I can't even explain it. So like, you know when, it's like annoying. So you know when you're like, yeah, you're your third wheel, you're just sitting there and people are talking, you know, over, over, oh, blah, 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 blah. And you're just like trying to get a word in and people don't care. You know, they're just uh, ignoring you completely. You're just like, oh, uh, uh, you just. This is insane. He is an absolute narcissist. No wonder she blocked him. It's just the same with the barkeeper that doesn't want him in his place anymore. DBDR acts like there was no reason, but if you listen to the barkeeper, it's clear that the redhead was misbehaving. The fuck he could be talking about? This is the same bar that, uh, you know, I went to with my one-itis and, you know, her boyfriend was there and I told her I wanted to have sex with her a bunch of times in front of him, all that. Yeah, that's a, that's a fucking joy. My life just sucks, man. Like, it really does. <laughs> But, uh, you know, so he, yeah, he goes, I, you know, because of an incident that happened a few months ago and I, start, I didn't question that either. I just started walking out again and he goes, do me a favor. Just, just don't come back here. And I was like, okay, like, I just thought it was weird, you know? So, uh, I ended up going home drinking a lot, you know, just like drinking myself into oblivion pretty much for the next like two hours. It, it didn't really take long, you know, uh, to get like near blackout. It's just the same in his latest video. He claims a waitress called the cops on him and his friend for no reason. Just because they weren't chads. He also claimed the female police officer was biased against him. In reality, the waitress and the police officer were both just doing their jobs. It was DBDR that was blackout drunk. Here are some examples of how he acts with a little rest alcohol. Oh, sweetie, and I was so got brainwashed. I was brainwashed. Else, and start ball fucking balding by the time that I turned twenty seven. Yeah, that's a he's like he's like oh my god, he needs to go back to college. He needs to. He needs that bachelor's. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. I'm a cuck. Listen to me. He needs his bachelor's. He needs it. It's a highly competitive market out there. The kids aren't getting jobs anymore. You need the paper. You need the paper. You need it. Just imagine this guy fully drunk. I mean, he even posted pictures of his swollen hand from hitting the wall in the strip club. This has nothing to do with black pill. He is just a loser using the black pill as an excuse for his behavior and the black pill community to get recognition, support, and money. That's why he always changes his height. At first said he was over six feet. Then he noticed that viewers stopped having pity, so he claimed he was mismeasured by several doctors and was actually 5 feet 9 inches. Currently, he settled for 5 feet 11 inches and a half. Guys, I swear by my family that you don't have to live like that even if you are unattractive. DBDR is a grown-ass man that admits to pee in his bed and talks about his mother constantly. In his head, he never became an adult. He is just using the black pill as an excuse. Maybe 30% of his failings are black pill related, but the majority isn't. In my opinion, most Inkels peak after high school and college. Sure, they peak on a low level, but they are benefiting the most from a at least partly skill-based environment. In high school, it is all about popularity. Nobody cares if you suck at the classes, but in a company environment, people hate unproductive, unreliable, and unintelligent colleagues. And there are also so many more opportunities. You can do IT and sit on a computer all day or work in production. As long as you create value, people will appreciate you. Sure, for some people, a loving relationship won't happen. But just because one area of your life sucks, doesn't mean you have to destroy all other areas of it. For me personally, it really opened my eyes when a 23-year-old grown as proudly reports how he slept in his own urine and his followers comment, man this would never happen to a chad. And you can also see this when DBDR talks about his friends. In my opinion he never learned what a friend is. Probably because of his narcissism. He basically met a bunch of drug addicts and loaned them hundreds of dollars. Bro, if you are listening to this, 
Those guys are not your friends. Anyhow, the black pill is real, life isn't one-dimensional, and DBDR is beyond saving. I wish you a nice evening. I want to see, I want to see the stripper again. Is it bad that I miss her? I do.